When people who have paid attention to football over the years think of the guy of True Blood, so many only think of the man and the quarterback who had his job taken over by easily the greatest quarterback of all time, the man standing to his right of Tom Brady, who's won seven Super Bowls, including one this year for the Buccaneers, having the most Super Bowls of any player of all time. But what people don't remember about Drew Bledsoe is the 14 seasons he had in the NFL, nine with the Patriots, where he went and took the Patriots to their second Super Bowl in their history and getting four Pro Bowls along the way, leading to him get it, being inducted into the Patriots Hall of Fame in 2011. Drew Bledsoe had a great career, and people underappreciate that, and they don't look at the specifics of his career, including the time where he almost died and that what led to the rise of Tom Brady and the evil empire. So today, we'll be getting into Drew Bledsoe's career. What he did before he hit the NFL, what he did in his NFL career, and even what he's doing now as one of the best Patriots of all time and a guy who many feel is underappreciated after the legacy that Brady has left on the Patriots. So this is... Patriots Patriots of the past on Drew Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe was born on February 14, 1972, in the small town of Walla Walla, Washington, where he attended Walla Walla High School, where he played football, basketball, and he even competed in track and field. After graduating high school, he went on to Washington State in 1990, where he played for three seasons, and in his junior year, they won the Copper Bowl after going 9-3, and three, and he won the Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year. As a Washington State quarterback, he recorded records in single-game passing yards at 476 yards in a game, single-season pass completions at 241 completions in a season, and single-season pass yards recording 39 or 3,946 yards. In his 34 starts of his college career, he was able to hit numbers of 9,373 yards passing with 532 completions and 66 touchdowns. With this play, he was able to be drafted first overall in the 1993 draft by the New England Patriots, bringing them to five wins in his first year with the team, surprisingly a number they hadn't amassed in a while. On November 13, 1994, the Patriots had just won three of their first nine games, and they were losing 20-3 to to the Minnesota Vikings at halftime. Bledsoe had a comeback victory, where the Patriots won 26-20 in overtime as he set single-game records in pass completions and attempts with 45 pass, uh, pass completions and 70 attempts. The win was able to spark the beginning of a new age for the Patriots, as they were able to rally behind Bledsoe and win six of their, their final games, games to finish with a record of 10-6 and six and capture a wild-card spot. However, they were lost to Cleveland Browns in the wild-card 13-20. But due to Bledsoe's performance over that year, he was selected to his first Pro Bowl as an alternate. Following a difficult 1995 season, Bledsoe turned it around in 1996, being ranked among the top passers in the league with the help of wide receiver Terry Glenn, pushing the Patriots to the playoffs again and winning the AFC Championship game over the Jacksonville Jaguars 20-6. This led to an appearance in Super Bowl 31, where they would eventually lose to the Green Bay Packers 35-31, giving Brett Favre his first Super Bowl. Bledsoe had completed 25 of his 48 passes for 253 yards with two touchdowns and four interceptions. Though those stats didn't help bring the Packers to a win, His play earlier in the season helped make Bledsoe a second-time Pro Bowler. Bledsoe's career would take a very odd turn, though. In March of 2001, Bledsoe had signed a then 10-year, a record 10-year, $103 million contract, but that contract would not see its way through. As to start the 2001 season in Drew Bledsoe's second game. Bledsoe was hit by Jets linebacker Mo Lewis, suffering a sheared blood vessel in his chest, which in the hospital almost resulted in his death. 
Replacing Bledsoe was backup Tom Brady, who took the starting position and led the Patriots to the playoffs. Though Bledsoe never regained his starting role in that season, Bledsoe proved to be a help of the Patriots in the playoff run, as when Brady got hurt in the AFC Championship game, Bledsoe would replace Brady and carry the Patriots to help them secure the Super Bowl as they would move on to face the Rams in Super Bowl 36, where Adam Vinatieri would then hit the game-winning field goal to give the Patriots their first Super Bowl victory and Tom Brady the first of his seven. Now, after this game, the Patriots decided that they wanted to keep Tom Brady to be the starting quarterback for the Patriots in the following year, and that they would move on from Drew Bledsoe as they would trade him to the Buffalo Bills. A change of scenery to Bledsoe's former division rival in Buffalo seemed to give him a bit of a rejuvenation in 2002. He had one of his best seasons ever, passing for 4,300 yards, 24 touchdowns, and making his fourth trip to the Pro Bowl. In Week 2 against the Vikings, a team that Bledsoe had made records against before, he set a team record with 463 yards passing in an overtime win. He continued his strong play in 2003 as the Bills began the year 2-0. After a number of injuries stymieing the Bills' offense, they failed to score a touchdown in three consecutive games en route to a 6-10 season. In 2004, they fell one game short of making the playoffs, a late-season winning streak wasted when Bledsoe and the Bills performed poorly against the Steelers' backups in the season finale. After this poor season, Bledsoe was released by the Bills in 2004 to make way for first-round draft pick J.P. Lossman, a move that would eventually uh, not work out for Buffalo. When Bledsoe was later signed by the Cowboys, he expressed bitterness with the Bills for the move, stating, I can't wait to go home and dress my kids in little stars and get rid of the other team's stuff. Bledsoe was at was obviously unhappy with the move, but he was ready to get started with his new team in Dallas. When Bledsoe had signed with the Cowboys, he was reunited with his former head coach in Bill Parcells, as Parcells was the coach who drafted Bledsoe to start his career. Bledsoe wanted to be the long-term solution at, ca- at quarterback for the Cowboys. Bledsoe saying on the day he was signed, Bill wants me here and being the starter. I anticipate that being the, that being the case and not for one year, as that day he had signed for three years and $23 million. During his time with the Cowboys, he threw for over 3,000 yards in a season for the ninth time in his career, tying Warren Moon for fourth in NFL history. That season, Bledsoe had led five fourth-quarter and overtime gaining-winning drives to keep the Cowboys' playoff hopes alive until the final day of the season. Though the team ultimately failed to reach the playoffs, Bledsoe had led them to a 9-7 record and an improvement over the 6-10 mark that Vinny Testavardi had finished with for the Cowboys in 2004. However, in 2006, his final season with the Cowboys, Bledsoe's play became not so great, so much that six games into the season, he was replaced by future Pro Bowler Tony Romo and now great CBS announcer. Shortly after the end of the 2006 season, Bledsoe was released by the Cowboys, and after not wanting to be relegated to a backup position, Bledsoe announced his retirement from the NFL on April 11, 2007. After retiring in 2007, Bledsoe founded the Doubleback Winery with his close friend Chris Figgins, and in his spare time he also works with many other philanthropic organizations. He became the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Summit High School in Bend, having held the position since 2012 and still holding it to this day. Bledsoe retired in the NFL, being fifth in NFL history in pass attempts with 6,717 pass attempts, as well as fifth in completions with just over 3,800 completions, seventh in passing yards at 44,000, and 13th in touchdowns with 251 touchdowns in his career. With these numbers and how well 
of a guy he was for the Patriots. The organization decided to induct him into the Patriots Hall of Fame in 2011. In the few times that Bledsoe had gone back to the stadium in his career where he wasn't performing for the Patriots, the fans there greeted him with massive applause, respecting him for what he did for the team and what how much greatness he gave to them. Bledsoe may not be the greatest quarterback in Patriots history as he will forever be overshadowed by the legacy of Tom Brady, but that doesn't mean that Bledsoe did not make an impact on the Patriots and the NFL and doesn't take away from the idea that he is and was a great quarterback and helped shape the Patriots the Patriots franchise that is around today.